Hey folks, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be showing you a way of creating some rocky procedural cliffs in Blender. Now these cliffs are pretty customizable and as you can see, you can start to build some rock formations pretty quickly, which is pretty awesome if I do say so myself. As for the rendering, I'll be using the good old Cycles render engine. However, before diving into the tutorial, just a quick heads up, there is a comprehensive write-up of this tutorial which I will link in the description box. If you find these text-based tutorials helpful, consider subscribing to the website. Enough talking, let's get jiggy with it. A good starting point for any 3D project is reference images. What you create in 3D is only going to be as good as your reference images, so it's important not to skip this step. For this tutorial, I'll be using a royalty-free image from Unsplash. This particular image is provided by Robin Hu. Don't worry, I will provide a link to this image. Unsplash is a pretty great resource for inspiration as pretty much everything on there is royalty-free. Now I'm going to jump into Blender and split my view here. I'll go into the UV image editor and load up my image. Control space to go into full screen. In essence, I want to spend some time analyzing and breaking down my reference image here. From an initial inspection, you'll notice that these cliffs have these erosion marks. Now, I'm not a geologist, but I believe this is where water level once was and has eventually receded. It's left these marks on these cliffs. We want to incorporate this aspect somehow when we're modeling our cliffs later on. But how do we approach the modeling process, you may wonder. Before I model anything in 3D, I always like to break down my reference images into their primitive forms. From this reference image, you can see that these cliffs have a very cuboid-like structure to them. And from this breakdown, you can see that these cliffs are essentially cubes stacked on top of each other. And we'll use this as a starting point for our 3D modeling in Blender. We won't actually be modeling these cliffs, but rather creating a block out. And we'll use this block out silhouette to give shape to our cliffs. Finally, we will pair these block out shape with some procedurally generated materials to finish off our procedural cliffs. For this tutorial, I will not be modeling any foliage or trees, but if you're eager, I would provide a link to a tutorial which will show you how. I'll select my default cube, press X to delete, and I'll delete this light. What I'm going to do is create a new collection and give this a name. When we start creating our cliff geometry, things are going to get pretty crazy, so it's always best to stay organized. Shift A, and then I'm going to add in a metal ball cube. Now, everyone has their own way of doing things in 3D. Like the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The way I like to approach procedural stuff in 3D is to create a starting point and then let the software do the rest of it. With Metaballs, we get that starting point as well as retaining a non-destructive workflow. 5 key to go into orthographic view and I'll just delete this camera here using the X key. 1 key to go into my front view and I'll activate my transform tool here and scale it on the Z axis. S key and I'm going to scale the whole thing to about here. We're not working in real world scale at this point so don't worry too much about scale. Before we go any further it's best to adjust the resolution for this metal ball cube so let's do that now. Go into the metal balls properties tab. For my render size I'm going to set it at 0.15. The lower you go the higher the resolution is going to be. For my viewport resolution I'm going to set it at 0.2. If you start experiencing performance issue, I would recommend coming back here and setting the viewport resolution to somewhere between 0.3 and 0.7. I also have a video on how to increase viewport performance in Blender, which is available on my channel. Feel free to check that out. With my cube selected, I'm going to press Shift D and Z, and this will duplicate on the Z axis. S to scale it down. I'll scale it on the X axis and give it some rotation and I'll move it down just a touch on the Z axis. Select the bottom cube and duplicate it on the Z axis and I'm going to scale it a touch. Move it into a position something like that and then I'm going to rotate it on the X axis. I'll quickly make sure that nothing strange is going on with the metal balls adhesion 
Shift D to duplicate on the Z axis and I'm going to rotate on the X axis. Move it into position and we're done with this cube. I'm going to select the bottom cube once again. Shift D to duplicate and I'm going to move it on the Z axis here on top. Again, pretty much the same process. Scale it, rotate it as you see fit. Adding enough randomization so it doesn't look copied and pasted. Remember, we're trying to replicate an organic object. Organic objects have a lot of flaws and inconsistencies which we as artists want to recreate to give a sense of realism. To finish off the top section of this cliff, I'll add a little rock pillar here. I'm going to speed up this next part here because it's pretty repetitive. I don't want to completely cut this section out of the tutorial because it does show how I achieve the look for the cliff. One thing to know is that it's very important to keep referring to your reference image while you're creating this block out. I have mine just off screen here. I won't be replicating the exact look from the reference image. I want to add some of my own flair to it. If your cliff is going to be away from the camera, you don't need to put this much work into it, but it does help creating a realistic look. Remember, we also want to keep our scene optimized and these meta balls are pretty high poly at this point. I think I'm just about done with blocking out this cliff. Before I jump into the shader editor and start throwing nodes at you, I just want to take a moment to break down what we're going to be doing in the shader editor. You will have to excuse my writing because I'm using a mouse to annotate here. The first thing we want to do is create a bump and displacement for our cliff surface. This is going to be that rocky bumpy surface for our cliff. For this procedural cliffs, I want to have the geometry finished off. In this case, bumps and displacement before I move on to doing anything else with the shader. The second thing we want to do is add some sort of a base color. Remember, this is all procedural and we won't be using any textures. And yes, that is how I spell color. Not everyone uses the American English. The third and final thing is going to be the procedural icing on this procedural cake. And that is some procedural grass on these cliff peaks here. We won't be creating real procedural grass, but rather faking the grass look with our material setup. Everything that I do in the shader editor from now on is going to be towards those three parts that I've just outlined. Now the shader setup is going to look pretty complicated, but I assure you it's very simple. With that said, let's jump into shading and texturing our cliff. I'm going to split my screen so it's easier to see what I'm doing and I'm going to switch over to the shader editor. With my Metaballs cliff selected, I'm going to create a new material. And let's just quickly give this a name. I like to keep my naming conventions as simple as possible. One last thing I'm going to do is set the render engine to cycles. Don't worry if you don't have this GPU option here. It's not a deal breaker for this tutorial. Control space to go into full screen and I'm just going to move this principled out the way so we have some space to work with. Remember the first part of our objective is to have the displacement completed before we move on to shading and texturing our cliff. So let's work on our displacement. The first thing I'm going to do is press Shift A and then I'm going to add in a Musgrave texture node. With the Musgrave node selected, I'm going to press Ctrl T and this will add in a mapping node setup. Make sure you have Node Wrangler activated, which you can do through preferences and add-ons. Set the Musgrave texture to be rigid multifractal. To get a finer control over our Musgrave texture, I'm going to add in a color ramp and just connect it like so. Now we need a way to convert these nodes into displacement data. So what I'm going to do is shift A and I'm going to add in a displacement node. And what I'll do is connect this to displacement and then select our color ramp and plug it in here. While I'm at it, I'm going to set the displacement height to 1.5 and the mid level to 0. I'll select my displacement node and then I'm going to press the N key which will bring up this sidebar. Go into the options tab and then choose settings and what we want is right here. Set it to displacement and bump. Now we can continue with what we were doing. I'm going to go back to my Musgrave texture here and then control space to go out of full screen. Let's go into our rendered view and we don't see anything. And that is because we don't have any lights in our scene. So let's create a light now. 
shift a light and i'm going to add in a sun lamp i'll rotate it a bit on the y axis m and then i'm going to move it onto a different collection now it's time to tickle these nodes and see what we can come up with i'm going to set the scale to be 4.5 i'll set the detail to be 15. next i'm going to set the dimension to 0.6 Lacanarity essentially controls the scaling of each layer of the Musgrave texture. We don't need to do anything with that at the moment, so I'm going to leave it at 2. I'm going to set the offset to 0.2 and the gain to 40. Let's zoom into our mesh and see what this looks like. And I think what I'll do is go back to my color ramp and adjust how much of that noise detail is coming through. I'll leave it at that for now. Next, what I'm going to do is select all these nodes shift d to duplicate and i'll just move them down here i'll select these nodes again and press m to mute them this will just help us isolate these bottom nodes here we need to mix these two sets of node groups together so what i'm going to do is add in a mix rgb node plug it in there and i'm going to select the color ramp and plug it there for the second set of nodes i'm going to set the texture coordinates to object now let's adjust the mapping of this secondary noise so i'm going to set the x scale to be negative 0.3 now let's zoom in a bit so we get a better look at our noise i'm going to change the noise scale to one and what this will do is give us these um, horizontal deformations on our rock and this is to give it that water eroded look that we analyzed in our reference earlier i'll increase the dimension to 0.7 I'm not going to do anything with the lacunarity. Set the offset to 0.2 and I'm going to set the gain to 75. Now let's get a better look at our rock. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Now you can try a different scale setting for the X axis, but I find that um, negative 0.3 works best in my case here. I'm not going to mess around too much with these noise settings here because I want to move on to the next part. I'm going to zoom out a bit here, select this mix node and select all these. Shift D to duplicate and I'll move them here. Plug that in there, move this out the way and I'm going to select the output from here and plug it there. I'm going to mute these top nodes here just so we can isolate the bottom ones. The first thing I'm going to do here is adjust the mapping. So I'm going to set the X scale to be 3.5. And for the Y scale, I'm going to set it around negative 1.5 or negative 1.7. With this, we get this vertical details here. Let's move on to our Musgrave texture here. First things first is the scale. Now I'm just going to increase it until I see something I like. Let's move on to the dimension and I'm going to set it at 4. I'm going to skip the other settings and adjust the gain to be 40. And let's tone it down a little bit we don't want this gain to overlap with our first noise texture i think we might need to adjust it a little bit more let's zoom out a bit here i don't want to go into too much detail here so what i'm going to do is to save some time i'm going to set the mapping z scale to zero this is just to give our cliff some vertical detail i'll zoom out a bit here and again select these nodes shift d to duplicate and i'll move them down here shift a and i'm going to add in a mix rgb node plug it in there i'll select the output from here and plug it into the mix node select these top nodes here and mute them for these nodes i'm going to set the texture coordinates to be generated and in the mapping i'm going to reset the scale Let's head over to our Musgrave texture and here I'm going to set it at FBM and I'm going to adjust the scale here. I'll set it to 7.5, increase it a little bit and I'm going to set the dimension to 0.5. I think I'm going to increase the dimension just a touch and that looks a bit better. And finally I'm going to increase the lacunarity to 2.3. I'll adjust the color ramp here so the details aren't too harsh. And that about does it for our displacement node setup. I'm going to select all these nodes that I've muted and unmute them by pressing M. And you'll see our cliff in its full displacement glory.
Some details like this are quite harsh, so we need to go back to our nodes and adjust them. For this, I'm going to use the color ramp. These vertical details are still a bit too harsh, so I'm going to move the black color stop a bit and see if that fixes it. I'm going to move down to my last Musgrave node and I'm just going to adjust the dimension and tone it down a little bit. The values I'm using in this tutorial are completely arbitrary. These are values that I played around with before making this tutorial and they're what worked for me to achieve this look. But I highly encourage you to use your own values and see what works for your own project. You can actually use these mix shader nodes to adjust how much of a certain noise group is coming through, which I am doing here. Now for some reason my smaller scale rock details are not processing properly so let's go back to our nodes and see what's going on. Aha! I forgot to unmute my texture coordinates node here. This is why I like to use the mute function while I'm working in the shader editor because you get that visual reminder to unmute nodes when you're done. So I'm going to unmute this by pressing M, control space to go into full screen mode and I'm going to select these nodes here and then I'm going to press control F and this will give it a frame. So let's label this frame and these nodes up here are going to be our large scale rock details. Let's create a frame for these sets here, control F and then that will give it a frame. This set is the horizontal rock detail for our cliff. So let's label that. And I'm going to select these here. Control F again. And these are our vertical details for our rock cliff. So let's label them. And finally, I'm going to select this. Create a frame. And these nodes are the finer details for our rock cliff. So let's label them. It's possible to layer these nodes up and build quite a lot of rock detail. For now, this level of detail is okay, but if you want to, spend more time and get a more natural and realistic look. I'm going to select all these nodes here, including the mix shader nodes, and then I'm going to press Ctrl G, and that will group them so we get this one single node instead of a bunch of mess. In the sidebar here, I'm going to give this node group a name and that's our displacement part done. Let's move on to creating the base color. I'm going to zoom out and find my Larry Loner principled BDSF. Let's add in a color ramp and I'm going to plug the color into the base color of the principled. We want to add some variation in the hues of the color of this rock. So to do that, I'm going to add in a Musgrave texture and I'm going to plug it into the color ramp factor. Control T and this is going to add in a mapping node setup. Change the vector coordinates to object. Let's exit full screen and see what that is doing. I'm going to switch over to rendered view. Like with the displacement, we can use the color ramp here to adjust how harsh these values are. But for now, I'm going to go into my mapping node and adjust the scale of this texture. I'm going to set the X scale to 0.5 and the Y scale to 5.5. For now, I'm going to leave the Z scale to the default. Right now, these noise details are too small, so I'm going to head over to my Musgrave texture and I'm going to set the scale to say 0.2. And now what we want to do is give this base color, well, some color. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to split my view here and select my UV image editor and load up my reference image. What I want to do here is to pick a good highlighted area such as this. Let's zoom in a bit here. And what I'm going to do is go back to my color ramp and then pick this eyedropper tool. Go back to my reference image and select this color here. And now we have some base color for our cliff. I will recommend caution doing this because sometimes when you're selecting colors from reference images, the colors may not be very accurate. I'll show you what I mean. I'll go back to my color ramp and select this black stop here. Click on this color and select the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select this dark color here. And you'll see we get this blue color here which is not very accurate. Which means that we're going to have to do this manually. I'll undo that 
select this stop here. I'm going to hover my cursor over this color here. Control C to copy. Select this black stop here and then Control V and paste the selected color. Select this color stop and I'm just going to darken it a little bit to give it some variation. You want to make it a bit darker than the base color of this cliff. I'm going to add another color stop just to give this cliff some variation. And I'm going to adjust this middle stop here and move it down so my base color is a bit brighter. You can literally spend hours tweaking these settings here but for now I'm going to leave these settings as they are. Control space to go into full screen and I'm going to select these nodes here. Shift D to duplicate and move them down here. Next I'm going to add in a mix RGB node so shift A mix RGB and I'm going to plug it here and select the output from here and plug it into the mix node. While I'm at it I'm going to go over to the second color ramp and select this color stop and delete it. Control space to exit full screen. Like before I'm going to select these nodes and press M to mute them so we can work on the secondary color details. The first thing I'm going to do here is adjust the mapping. Set the X scale to 5 and for the Y scale I'm going to set it to 50 and I'll set the Z scale to 3. And what we're doing here is creating these vertical details here. Let's go over to our noise texture here and I'm going to set the scale to 2. Let's zoom into our cliff here so we get a better look. And I'm going to move over to the color ramp and essentially what you want to do here is to go back to your reference image or have it in one of the windows here. And essentially what we want to do is match the variations of the colors in our reference images. This can take some finessing so take your time here you'll get much better results. I'll zoom out a bit here. I'm going to select these nodes, press M to unmute them and our base color is almost done. I just need to darken this spot a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my color ramp and I'm going to select this color stop and I'm going to move the lightness down to about there. I'm just going to quickly adjust the position of this stop so I get a bit more variation in the lightness and darkness. I'm going to leave this mix node here as it is, but feel free to play around if you need to. Control space and I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to select everything here, Control F to create a frame and let's give this a name. With all these nodes selected, what I'm going to do next is press Control G and group them together into a single node. And let's name this while we're at it as well. I'll call it my rock base color here. N key to hide the sidebar and I'm going to move this node just about here. Control space to exit my shader editor and I'm just going to clean up my view here by closing this window. And finally what we need to do is add some grass on these peaks on these cliffs. So let's go back to our shader editor. But before we do that remember we only want to put our grass on the peaks on the Z axis. We don't want it all over our rock. So how do we do that? Really simple I'll show you. Shift A and I'm going to add in a separate x y and z node and i'm going to place it somewhere here so we've got more room to work with shift a and i'm going to add in a texture coordinate node and for the coordinates output we're going to use normal here and plug it into our separate x y and z shift a to add in a math node and because we want the z axis i'm going to use a z axis output here and plug it into the value let's set this to multiply Select the math node, shift D to duplicate and I'm going to plug it like so. One final node I'm going to add is a color ramp and I'm going to plug it in there. Now we want these separate values to be used with our base color over here. So what we're going to do is shift A and add in a mix shader node and I'm going to plug it there and use the color from here for the factor of the mix shader node. Like before, I want to keep my node setup tidy and easy to work with. So what I'm going to do is select all these nodes, Control F, and I'm going to give them a name. This node setup is our separate Z grass, so I'm going to name it accordingly. 
And this is our basic node setups to separate our grass on the Z axis. I've added in two math nodes here so we get a lot more finer control over the spread of our procedural grass. You don't need to do that but um, it's always good to have some more control. Now let's move on to actually creating our grass node setup. Shift A to add in a principled BDSF. I'll move this separate stuff out the way so we've got more room to work with here. Shift A and I'm going to add in a color ramp. Let's plug this color ramp output to the base color of the principled BDSF. And next I'm going to add in a Mossgrave texture node. Plug this into the color ramp factor. Let's see what that is doing. And it's not doing much. That's because we haven't set our grass color yet. So let's set that now. I'm going to pick a bright green color and then plug this into the mixture shader. Just so it's easier to see what we're doing. What I'm going to do is mute this base color node setup. Now we're getting a better visual representation of our grass shader here. Let's add a darker shade of grass color in this color ramp here. I'm going to go over to my Z separate node groups and adjust some settings. I'll set this to 4. And I'm going to set this math node to maybe 0.3. Right now the grass is looking a bit too dark so I'm going to adjust the brightness and the contrast of the spread on the Z axis. I think that looks okay for now. I'm not going to spend too much time here fine tuning this, but the node setup's there if I need to. And I'm just going to quickly set my grass tones here in the color ramp node. And it's important to get a range of colors here. You don't want your grass to have a single block of color, unless you're going for that stylistic look. You definitely want to spend a reasonable amount of time here. I'm only using three color values here, which I don't think is enough but uh, I don't want to spend too long on this. Hopefully you folks can do a better job here than me. Now, what I want to do is increase the patchiness of this grass here. So let's head over to our Musgrave texture and fiddle with the scale. I'm going to set the scale to 10 and I don't think I need to do anything else here. Select the Musgrave and the color lamp node, Shift D to duplicate. I'm going to move them here. We need to mix them together so I'm going to add in a mix RGB node, plug it in there and I'm going to connect this color ramp to the mix shader node. Let's make our lives a bit easier and mute these two and I'm going to adjust the colors here a little bit. And the goal here is to have a bit more variation in the color range here on this second color ramp node. This is just going to add a more natural level of realism to our grass. I want the secondary grass to be quite small and patchy, therefore I'm going to set the scale to 140. Let's zoom in here and get a better look. And I'm just going to adjust the color stops here a little bit. Add in more color range here if you need to, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I think this is good for now. I'm going to unmute the top layer of grass here. The final detail I want to give this grass is some bump detail, so let's do that now. Shift A and I'm going to add in a new Musgrave texture. We want to convert this Musgrave to bump data. Therefore, I'm going to add in a bump node. Plug the Musgrave into the height of the bump. And now we need to assign it to our mesh. So I'm going to add in a texture coordinates node. And for this texture coordinates node, we want to use the object data. And I'm going to plug that into the Musgrave texture. And I'm going to finish this off by plugging the bump node into the normal of the principled BDSF. One last thing I want to do is reactivate my base color node setup by selecting it and pressing M. Let's exit full screen and see how this is looking. My grass displacement nodes aren't correlating with my grass color so I'm going to adjust that and I think I'm going to adjust the details here to 15. Make sure that you're in rendered view in your 3D viewport to edit your shader nodes here. I think what I'm going to do is increase the scale of this bump map to 60. If your cliff is going to be closer to the camera, I'd recommend setting this value a lot higher, but for now this works well. The grass highlights here kind of look like a leopard skin 
So what I think I'm going to do is scale up the noise texture for these grass highlights. And the highlights are this Musgrave texture here. So I'm just going to increase it until I see something that looks better, I guess. I find that a value of 300 for the scale kind of works here. Okay, so I want to tweak how much grass I'm getting on my clip. So I'm going to come over here to the separate Z group and I'm just going to adjust the color ramp. And if I play around with the values of this multiply node, you'll see that I have a much finer control over how much grass I want to allow to appear on this cliff, which is pretty neat. The math node and the color ramp is all you need here to control the density of your grass on this cliff. Let's tidy up our nodes here. So I'm going to select this, control F and give this a frame. And this is our grass base color nodes. I'm going to select everything here, press control G to group them together. And this is basically our entire grass node setup. Let's give it a name. So we have our displacement setup here, our base color setup for our rock mesh, and we have our Z grass setup here. So let's get a final look at our procedural cliff. And that pretty much does it for this video. Thank you for watching and stay awesome.